There's just a bit of a video on why I don't really like dimmers, which really just stems from a power factor or, or that, but also the power general power quality issue of which bad power factor is a bit of an extension. Um, by the way, don't attempt this at home, risk of electrocution. Uh, this does involve mains. Um, for safety reasons, I am... Um, it's not painfully hot or anything. Back on wood. Um, I am using a, um, 200, <coughs> a 250 volt ampere isolation transformer to isolate the experiment, which is just a dimmer and a lamp holder and a, and a 1 ohm series current shunt right there. Um, I just have the isolation transformer to isolate all the stuff um, so that I can um, just measure <laughs> again one of it, you can't just really measure really know you without risking killing stuff but um, that's just so that um, it isn't super critical as far as having the main supply ground reference properly so that you are measuring stuff on the neutral otherwise you'll have issues with ground loop currents through the scope and ground loops and um, which would all cause the loop current er errors and issues and just general crap like that. But, um... Yeah. Um, but anyways, um... Again, a better way to do this would be to have about three differential probes for the various for the three measurements that I need for the experiment, which are potential out of the scope for that probe and lamp potential that's out of the dimmer through that probe, which are, by the way, both 100x probes, and um, across the current shunt. But the cheapest differential probes new that I've seen are almost 300 bucks a piece from Marlon P. Jones, and after shipping, it would be a bit over 300 bucks a piece. Uh, so that'd be almost a grand in scope probes, and I'm poor, so. And yes, before you say anything about this being a $2,400 scope, which yes, did pull, pay full price for, but I did have a family member help as far as funding that. That could. So, but anyways, um, what the probes, or what the uh, scope is displaying here, are the potential out of the isolation transform, which is this yellow trace, um, light blue, which actually looks kind of whitish on camera. Uh, that is the upper potential of the dimmer that is lamp current and this is the instantaneous uh, lamp potential times instantaneous current graph that is just I'm doing that to get an idea of the power consumed by the lamp um, but anyways you can see here one of the issues is that little um, diddly bit right there is a um, main is a noise spike introduced by the um, transient when the dimmer turns on and a lot of that is just an artifact of how the triac phase cutter circuit in the dimmer works there isn't really a way to get around that really the option would be um employ something like uh, i'm trying to keep a cat from jumping up on my experiment but they like to do that um, um because of the fast rise time pulse when the dimmer uh, or when the track in the dimmer turns on, that induces a noise spike in the uh, main supply. Now a lot of that right there is going to be exacerbated just by virtue of the inductance of the um, isolation transformer. And if you zoom in on that, show up. Did I miss it? Oh no, I don't. Yeah. So you can see, stop that. <coughs> it's your, it's your, it's your classic uh, decaying exponential um, um, ringing that you'd expect from an inductive circuit, which an isolation transformer is. Um, but yeah. Okay. So. Let's get back to normal just adjusting it so that the center line on the graticule get the cats out of the way but I'm just adjusting it so that center line of the graticule is about at zero cross 
And anyways, and getting back to what I was originally talking about, got the um, RMS potential seen by the lamp, um, RMS current, maximum and uh, minimum current, which is effectively positive and negative peak because this is a zero centric sinusoid, and the um, rough power consumed by the lamp, that's just instantaneous potential time, instantaneous current, and then I'm just measuring the RMS of that um, math function. Um, and as you can see right now it's a bit it's in the neighborhood of about 1.5 and change to 1 which isn't too bad ideally it would be the square root of 2 to 1 for a um, for a mathematically perfect sinusoid it will square root of 2 or 1.014 or 1.0142 don't know if it might be 1.0418 or the those later decimals are getting a bit inaccurate but um, that is um, generally the 1.414 is the standard approximation you'll see a lot um, uh, just because it gets reasonable accuracy or for what most people are trying to do with it or most people are trying to use it most people probably don't know what that is but um, so the crest factor isn't quite ideal but a lot of that is just an artifact of that turn on but um, spike which is again just an artifact of the triac circuit and there's no real way to get around that um, the better thing to do would be to use something like a variac dimmer which some things where high power quality is a, is important will do but those are more expensive and substantially bigger than a triac phase cutter I mean that's uh, think of 500 or 600 watt dimmer of course it's derated if you have to if you mount the thing in a box but um, I mean again it's you know designed to fit in a standard American one gang wall box whereas a comparable size Variac would be bigger than that transformer but anyways as you dim the lamp is that you notice that the current actually increases even though the RMS power goes down um, Again, don't take that as gospel. I am going to independently measure the power consumed by this at a later date. But you can see even though the RMS current went down, peak current is going up. And fairly drastically. I mean, that's... Uh, yeah, about 600... Call it 660-ish milliampers or 650 milliampers versus um, peak versus 292 milliampers RMS. And... That's a crest factor of about two and a half, roughly. <clears throat> and, uh, or not quite two and a half, but in excess, well, in excess of two, like about 2.3, 2.4, thereabouts. Um, which is, again, not very good. And, of course, also that peak current is that it's being introduced onto the mains. Um right at the peak of the waveform because most people are going to dim lamps about halfway ish as I am doing right now um, and that is one of the reasons why the main supply nowadays it's very common to see it flat topped and another thing that you'll know that can be seen is that because of all this current being drawn in latter halves of each half wave cycle in the latter half of or in the latter part of the of each half cycle but not in the front you can see that the decay of the potential down to, of the main supply down to zero cross is a lot steeper than is when it's rising from zero cross up to peak and a lot of that has to do with the many hundreds of millions of dimmers on the grid and the many, many gigawatts of lamps dimmed in such a manner. Well, I don't know if it would be many, many gigawatts, but certainly on a global basis, but then I guess factoring the many do the dozens of different supply grids on the planet, but whatever. And of course, also a lot of that has to do with things like compact fluorescent lamps and um, switching supplies, because they also have the uh, current spike being drawn close to zero cross, like what I've shown in um, the um, two... Um, compact fluorescent and LED um, current uh, waveform analysis videos um, but 
yeah, a lot of that has to do with the, um, that, that, that's why mains isn't a proper sinusoid now and hasn't been since really the 1960s in sheep, um, or, uh, triac and, um, anti-parallel SCR for the bigger ones and also I think before triac speaking common there might have been a period, but I don't know, um, when anti-parallel SCRs were used, but cheaper to use one act, one semi, one, sem one power device instead of two. Although, for purposes of power dissipation reliability, bigger ones will use uh, anti-parallel SCRs, but that's going to need the many kilowatt dimmers. But anyways, and uh, the reason for the current going up is that the instantaneous potential of the uh, dimmer at any given infinite infinitesimally short sample point DT is the same as it is in the uh, normal main cycle even though the RMS potential may be different. And of course with this go and um, but the but the um, filament of the lamp as it cools from being dimmed it uh, the resistance decreases because the tungsten filament like many things or like most things actually has an increasing temperature as a positive temperature coefficient as it gets hotter the resistance goes up in fact uh, the difference between a lamp when it's cold and when it's running is or an incandescent lamp is on the order of about 15 to 1 so like for example a 100, 100 watt lamp has a not, or a 120 volt mains 100 watt lamp has a nominal operating resistance of 144 ohms you actually measure it as 9 or 10 ohms now that can be different as far as varying power levels of lamp and um, like it's, a, it's it's different for varying power levels but it's 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 over an order of magnitude difference in resistance which is also why there's a a high turn on spike and that's also why you need to derate switches from their resistive load for tungsten loads that's why you'll often see switches with a tungsten load rating and a resistive load rating, the tungsten load rating is going to be smaller because you need to account for that inrush. But anyways, and because the filament is cool, cooler and thus the resistance has decreased, but it's just got the same instantaneous potential applied to it, the instantaneous current at any point in, in the cycle is going to be higher, so even though there's a reduction in the RMS current, the peak current goes up. And I can see as I dim it down more substantially down to where the lamp's seeing about 54 volts. You can see 222, 223, 224 um, milliampere's operating current, but over 700 milliampere's RMS, so that's a crest factor of about three and a quarter to one, which is really not good, and this is why, again, what I wanted to do is if I, if I wanted a light level like that, I'd use a um, an 11 s14 sign lamp or a uh, um, or a seven and a half watt g11 and of course those lamps you can still get these uh, for these 40 watt ones um, well you can still find them in stores but they're getting hard to get and by the time you're watching this video probably they'll have long disappeared from store shelves which is why you stock up many years in advance like I did back on one but um, so yeah, and as you dim it down to a bit further, it doesn't really go up all that much, it actually goes down a bit, and then the dimmer just pukes, and power drops to nothing, and then you need to turn it up again. Again, this is the absolute, I think it was five bucks or something at Lowe's, I actually sold the same thing at Home Cheapo for a bit less, like I think less than five. But this is the absolute cheapest, nastiest dimmer you can get. Or, at least on a, a residential level. I mean, you could probably get, or on a home center level, so it'd be, you know, reasonably safe-ish. But, you know, again, I don't use dimmers, and we don't have any dimmers installed in this house. So, and I do have ones that perform a lot better than this one, but those were also more expensive. And that's why I'm not using them for this experiment because I built this test bench specifically for the experiment of determining the peak current 
drawn by one of these compact fluorescent lamps that was actually this very same lamp um, when you stick them on a dimmer and I didn't want to get something more expensive because a more expensive one wouldn't protect this one from getting blown up by you know having over 8 amperes stuck through it and I may end up um, trying a higher power lamps to see if there's any change in that but again, don't try this at home, risk of electrocution, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, that's... That's the bit of advice, I mean... Uh, or why I don't really like dimmers, and why if you really give a toss about power fact or power quality, and if you're dealing with something, and or if you're dealing with something like your radio amateur 73s, by the way, um, or doing any kind of things like a DIY radio telescope or something, Dimmers aren't really the kind of thing you want to have operating in the area just because of all the crap and noise they inject on the mains. Um, but yeah, and I know that, uh, I can't remember his name, but there's some guy who did a much better analysis of all the crap that a dimmer induces, and he had a, a, a homemade, um, vector scope and stuff, by the way, that's one reason why I'm not doing that, that kind of analysis for this, otherwise I would, is because this, a soul scope can't do vectors of, um, can't do vector scope like stuff. I mean, it can do an FFT, but that just gives you amplitude at a given frequency <coughs> in the frequency domain. It doesn't give you the time correlation between harmonics and stuff, but um, on the phase relations between harmonics. But so shut up about me not doing that because I don't have the means to. When I get the means to, I will. But yeah. And as a bit of an aside, this is, I mean, this looks a lot worse on camera than it actually is, but the, um, it would have been preferred if Rigal used something like a, your normal magenta pinkish color for Trace 3 and um, green for Trace 4 or some combination. And if this were a bit darker, if it were like the um, normal Channel 4 on the scope, which is that color blue. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly usable, it's just, you know, Minor quibble. <laughs>